Okay, this video is to serve as a guideline and to help anyone who's changing the oil on a 2003 to 2007 Maserati Quattroport. And I'm addressing those years specifically because this relates to a 4.2 liter V8 with a dry sump oiling system. Uh, the wet sump oil system is a little different. It's actually a little easier, but there's some key differences. Um, the oil filter is different, so that's something to take note of. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take you underneath this car. This is, happens to be a 2005 uh, Maserati Quattroport with a dual select transmission. So it's an automated uh, manual transmission and not the ZF automatic one that was used, I believe, from, I think, 2007 onwards. You could get that option. So I'm going to take you underneath the car and show you uh, what needs to be done. Okay, so here we are looking up at the car. And uh, the first thing you need to do is remove two large plastic panels underneath the vehicle. Uh, they are, so those two panels right there. Nothing too complicated there, but in the case of this car, I found that all the bolts were very corroded. So that's something you might struggle with. Um, so this, and this car only has 9,000 miles, uh, but the car is 19 years old. I imagine this is probably from condensation in a, uh, you know, in the concrete floor of a garage. But, uh, so these bolts were very corroded and they're socket cap bolts with a five millimeter uh, Allen head on them. So they're very easy to strip out. So this was a pain for me. Uh, in this case, it actually ripped out the nut right here. So I'm gonna install a new rivet nut here. Uh, I have to check, but I believe these are either six millimeter or five millimeter shank bolts. So I'm gonna go to the hardware store and install all new stainless bolts on it with a hex head on it to make it easier to uh, change the oil next time. But the point is, uh, as far as the first thing to do to drain the oil, so this is the passenger front tire I'm looking at. Um, this is the oil reservoir, so this holds most of the oil. You're gonna undo this uh, drain plug right here. It's a 22 millimeter hex. And underneath it is a small copper washer. Now it's great to replace that copper washer. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with reusing it as well. Just be mindful and pay attention, uh, watch for oil leaks. But always great to install a new uh, copper washer there. But drain that. And then here's a detail that I, I know a lot of shops miss, a lot of mechanics miss. And no one bothers to do this, and they really have to, or they really should. Um, removing right here. So, again, this is a dry sump oiling system. So, this is not really an oil pan. This is the sump of the engine. So, just above here is the crankshaft. But as soon as oil drops to the bottom of the engine, it immediately gets sucked up by the scavenging pump, which you can't see it here. This is the water pump, actually, I'm looking up at. But... Behind that, it's about 12 inches long, is the scavenging pump. It immediately sucks oil out of the engine and then pumps it up to this reservoir here. But my point is, is that there is always a little bit of residual oil here in the bottom of the uh, oil sump. So this plug right here, it's got a 10 millimeter hex on it, if I can focus in on it. And above that is another copper washer. Uh, Maserati absolutely intends, when you do an oil change, you have to remove this and drain that as well. You're probably going to get uh, one to two quarts of oil or one to two liters of oil out of there. So do that, reinstall the plug, make sure it's tight. And the oil filter itself, right here. So this looks, again, I'm stressing the dry sump thing because this is unique and it's not the same as the wet sump. So on a dry sump Maserati 4.2 liter, that oil filter number, um, 188814, that is the correct oil filter for a dry sump oiling system. Uh, the wet sump filter, to the best of my knowledge, starts with a 28. And even though both filters will screw into place, uh, they're not compatible. They're the oil relief valve inside is designed differently. So be sure to use that part number with a dry sump engine. Uh, 
what was I going to say add to that? So as far as I know, no after, there is no aftermarket oil filter available for this engine. So you have to get it from a Maserati dealership if, if you want to pay a lot of money for it. Or buy it from two parts websites. Uh, one is uh, Scuderia and the other one is uh, Eurospears. I'm going to include links for it below the uh, video description. So, I mean, that'd be a great place to verify what part number applies to your vehicle. And I encourage you to oil up, order the oil filters from them. Um, you can find the oil filters on eBay as well, but I question the um, if they're genuine filters or not, because there's, you know, there, God knows there's a lot of uh, counterfeit auto parts on eBay. So if something that might look like a genuine filter, but it's really not. Um, so that's it. So just be sure that you get that part number for a dry sump oiling system. Um, what else can I point out underneath here? This filter was very difficult to remove, or really it was just really tight, and it's in a tight space as well. Um, the filter, the diameter of it measures three and three eighths of an inch, or about 85 or 86 millimeters in diameter. So make sure you have a oil filter band wrench, a band wrench on hand to uh, remove that. Uh, in my case, it was so difficult to remove, I actually had to drive a screwdriver through it, all the way through it, and twist it so I had leverage on it in order to remove it. But so in my case, it was very difficult to remove. Um, I really think this might be the very first oil change this car's ever had. So it might have been the original oil filter, quite possibly. And that's pretty much it. Well, and then also this uh, heat shield here in between the catalytic converter and the uh, oil filter and the engine. Um, I've seen some guys recommend removing that, but that's really. That's ridiculous. Don't remove this uh, heat shield. You can undo these two 10 millimeter head bolts here just to make it easier to clean. But there's a third or a fourth bolt up top that's very difficult to get access to. So you, you can't readily remove this heat shield and I, I wouldn't recommend it. So after you install the new oil filter, you know, spray brake cleaner in here or use a rag soaked with mineral spirits and do your very best to clean that out. Uh, maybe use compressed air whatever you have to do, but I was able to get this thing uh, extremely clean with brake cleaner and a rag. And yeah, I think that's pretty much the only thing I have to point out under here. So again, drain it. You're draining the oil from uh, the oil reservoir, which holds most of the oil. And also on the engine right here in the bottom of the oil sump, uh, this plug right here. So now I'm gonna to go to the top of the car and show you where to uh, put the new oil in. Okay, so here we are underneath the hood. And uh, I just wanna point out, you know, use whatever brand of oil you wanna use, but uh, it's gotta be 5W40 synthetic. In my case, uh, at least here in the US, this is readily available, but Castrol Edge, uh, Eurocar spec, 5W40. Um, not that any of that really matters. Just use 5W40 synthetic oil uh, total oil capacity on this engine is nine and a half liters. No, let me, let me change that. I'm sorry. 10 and a half liters or 11 quarts of oil. I would recommend you pour in, uh, nine and a half liters or 10 quarts of oil first. And then after the engine warms up fully, shut it off and then double check your oil level and be prepared to add an extra, uh, one liter or one quart of oil. Um, as far, and as far as the dipstick and where to check your oil, it's right here. So it's on the passenger side. Here's the passenger fender. Um, there's a coolant reservoir, but right here is a little dipstick. So make sure after the engine's hot and the engine is turned off, check your oil level, make sure it's at the top of that cross hatched area. But that's also where you pour your oil in too. Uh, don't be worried about that uh, the smaller tube in the middle for the dipstick. Um, doesn't matter. Just pour your oil down in there. That's pretty much it. So afterwards, you know, start up your vehicle. You know, pay close attention to that uh, the oil light. Make sure it goes off. Um, you know, make sure you're checking for oil leaks. Make sure your drain plugs are tight, but not so tight you uh, strip them out. And that's pretty much it. So 
nothing too crazy about this uh, oil job or oil change job. And again, I'm going to include some details in the uh, description below this video, but hopefully that helps you out in changing the oil in your Maserati Quattroport.